Let's see if we can find the inverse Laplace transform right here, this 1 over s squared plus 2s. Now our main mode of attack is usually to factor the denominator, or if it can't be factored, completing the square. I do think we can factor this fairly easily. These both have an s in them. There's a GCF, a greatest common factor of s. So I'll just pull it out. Now this is not the Laplace transform of something right away. I can't just inverse transform this. We're going to need to split it up using partial fraction decomposition. So remember how that goes. We know that our fraction can be split into something over s. I'll call it a, just a number, just a zero degree polynomial over a first degree polynomial. And also splits up into b over s plus 2. There should be some a and b that satisfy this. And the way we find out is by multiplying everything by this denominator. So if I multiply every term by this entire denominator, it will clear all the fractions. So on the left, I'll just have 1. This term, well, the s over the s would cancel if I'm multiplying it by s times s plus 2. And I'd have a times s plus 2. And with the b term, the s plus 2s would cancel and you would just be left with some bs. Well, now what we can do, since they're just linear factors, we can just substitute values for s and figure things out. For example, if I were to let s be 0 in this equation, I'd have 1 equals 2a, and the b term would completely drop out because I'd have b times 0. This would give us that a is 1 half. Likewise, if I'm clever, I can substitute s to be negative 2. That would make the a term drop out. I'd get 2 minus 2 to go to 0. I'd have 1 equals negative 2b, or getting that b is negative 1 half. Now that I have a and b, I can plug them in right here. I know that a is going to be 1 half. I'll make this plus a minus, and b is also 1 half. So now if I want to find the inverse Laplace transform of this thing, that's actually going to be the same as taking the inverse Laplace of this. And I'll use the fact that the Laplace transform inverses, remember Laplace transforms are really integrals, they're linear. What that means is I can just factor the constant out, right? Remember you can pull constants out of integrals. So I can move that one half out front and I could also split them up so this is really taking the Laplace inverse of just 1 over s and then minus 1 half the Laplace inverse of 1 over s plus 2. And that's just using the properties of Laplace transforms. Now these, well, these should be fairly easy to figure out using a table of Laplace transforms. If you notice, well, 1 over s is the Laplace transform of 1, right? The Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s, so this first term will just be 1. And then I'd have minus 1 half. Well, let's think. If you look on the table of Laplace transforms, or if you just know it, if you have something that's transformed into 1 over s minus something, here this s plus 2 is really minus negative 2. That's really the transform of e to the at here a being negative 2. So this is actually e to the negative 2 t. There you have it. There is the inverse transform. You're welcome to clean that up or maybe factor out a 1 half with algebra. Whatever you think looks good. If there's anything you need to rewatch, you're free to do so. I hope you got something out of this video and I hope you have a great day.